The mini PCs that are available on AliExpress advertised as um, perfect for routers for OpenSense and PFSense. Do they work and are they worth buying? This video is going to address just that. So I did a video around 10 months ago. Um, the units basically look like this. They are really small, they're fanless, and I wasn't sure um, what the quality was like, what the reliability was like. So I figured I'd try one for myself, which I did. Um, that one is still running as it happens. This is the M5105. Now, when I did the previous video on the J4125 um, Celeron, a few people commented on that video and suggested that there was a better option available, which is an N5105 processor. And while it was, um, they started doing a couple of versions of them. One had the i225 Intel chipset for the NIC cards, and the new ones had the i226. Now, unfortunately, the i226 wasn't compatible with PFSense version 2.6 at the time. And now 2.7 is out, it's not really an issue. Um, but because it wouldn't work with PFSense 2.6, it didn't affect me. I got the M5105, which is this one. This is the exact one. Um, it died. Not in a bad way. We'll go over that in a second. So um, I tried it. This has been running for 10 months. It died. Now the hard drive died on it. Um, you could buy these with PFSense Plus on them, which was one of the reasons that NetGate changed the um, license policies because people kept providing these on AliExpress with PFSense Plus, which was against the license agreement. Um, anyway, cut a long story short, they worked fine on OpenSense because it had the latest drivers, um, but not on PFSense. And now PFSense 2.7 is out. These work fine. Uh, in fact, you could still use them as long as you downloaded the um, nightly builds of PFSense. But let's get back into it. So this is the one that died. Uh, in all fairness, the actual hardware didn't die. That didn't die. Didn't die. It's been solid. The SSD that was in it, that's what died and needs replacing. Now, the SSD that didn't come supplied with it, I bought the memory myself and I bought the SSD myself. Um, and this just died on me at home. You'll see, I'm going to take this apart and show you what's, um, what's involved, whether it's worth buying. And now I can give my opinion on it because I've been running it for so long. Um, let me just switch this over real quick. This is another one. This is exactly the same unit, um, but it's running Proxmox. It has a 500 gig NVMe hard drive in it. And it also has a, a 32 gig of RAM in it. So I installed Proxmox on it so I could play with OpenSense and get a couple of um, instances of it running and PFSense so I could carry on doing the OpenSense and PFSense videos. That's why my videos have been a bit um, random to say the least. So it's run fine for 10 months. I've got a couple of them. I've had one at home. I've had a couple in other locations and I've not deployed any to customers. But because it died, I was like, Meh, maybe they're not worth it. But it was a hard drive that died in that I bought. Let's take a look at what's inside it. So, when you take these apart, um, if you're going to fit a hard drive on them, then the hard drive basically. Let me just grab one. The hard drive has to screw to the bottom, so it mounts to the bottom of the, so it mounts to the top of the case, line it up with the holes. Um, when you put it in, there's not much room, because you have to get the cables as well. I've got one here. No. Um, so you have to get the cables in as well, which can be a problem. But that's basically the hard drive mount on the bottom of it. Um, front and the back come off to make it a bit easily accessible 
Um, if I hold this up, so you can see there's plenty of room in this if you're not actually putting a two and a half inch SATA drive in it. If you've just got the NVMe in it, like this one has, you've got plenty of room and you'll have no problems. The one that I've got that I'm using for Proxmox has got a NVMe in it, but it's also got a SATA hard drive in it for some storage. Um, so I can test some things, but this is the one that died. So while I've got it apart, I'm quickly just going to uh, change the memory over in there, the hard drive over in this. So the one that died is an 128 gig. This one's a Patriot. Go on, set focus. So that's basically the one that died. And I'm not saying Patriot's a bad mate. I've used them before. I've never had a problem with them. Um, the one that I'm going to be putting in it is an Integral. When you're buying the hard drives for them, um, keep in mind that they're not M2s. Uh, they're PCI Express drives that you need, not the dedicated. So I'm just going to pop this one in real quick. Bring that back down. The point of the video was, um, yes, they are worth it. Um, it's been great for testing purposes. Just try and put the case back on. Uh, please, it's upside down, so it's that way. Oh, let them. switch this back we've got the unit back together um, should power back up it did power up um, it just failed because of the SSD Get, getting control error timeout quickly gonna uh, install PF sense on this I'm not gonna go through how to uh, sorry open sense on this I'm not gonna go through how to install open sense um, I've already done a video on that. I'll leave a link up here for that. I'll also leave a link at the end of the video. I'll just plug it in real quick. Okay. While that is doing that, let me just. Uh, I'll leave the link. To where I purchased them from on AliExpress. So I've purchased these from two separate stores. Uh, one of them has been um, Wu Yi store, and the other one has been Topton. So this is the order that I placed. M5105, you get various options. So you can buy it with 16 gig of RAM, 256 gig um, uh, NVMe, one terabyte and 16 gig. Now, obviously, as you do these, the price, as you can see, is going up. Um, so that's not too bad in the UK. I generally say I generally get them without any, um, memory or hard drive so I can do them. You can pick the type that you want. So you can choose the older, uh, I-225 chipset, but there's no need to do that anymore. Um, the other store is obviously the top 10 store. So they've had good reviews on them. Uh, I can't see to say any issues that I've had so far. I have had problems getting BIOS updates for them. Um, as yet, I've not managed to figure out where I can get them from. But for whole mod purposes, these things I say are really good. Um, when it had died, I was like, well, these don't last too long. But I say it was just the fact that it was the um, page SSD that was in it that died. Um, so yeah, I'll leave links to both stores where you can get them. But you have to keep in mind, obviously, anything over I think it's hundred and thirty-five pound um, from the UK, you will get import tax on. So if you keep the price low, if you need to, get it without it. One hundred and thirty-nine, that'll be fine. You'll get away with. 
Um, but yeah, just keep the price in mind. You will have extra charges if you go over the uh, allowed threshold for pricing for importing. Um, they're up to with this. I'll just skip this part. Nobody really needs to watch this. Go ahead and complete the install. Remove the media. Don't remove it too soon or it will throw a load of errors up. The boot up logo, um, you can get rid of it. So, where is it? Uh, boot up, uh, full screen logo. And if you really don't want the Chinese stuff on the logo, just go ahead and disable it. Um, while we're in the BIOS, I have been through another look before. Um, so you can see this is M5105. This one's got eight gig of RAM on it. Uh, you've got your time options, CPU stuff. Uh, it does support virtualization. As I say, I'm actually running this same unit. I've got Proxmox running on it. Um, so it will work with Proxmox. I'm just doing that for uh, some videos that I've got going. If we boot this into OpenSense. Um, I'm just going to change the interfaces, so I'll we'll just log in as root. In fact, assign interfaces. Nope, nope. Uh, so this is what I was on about. As you can say, the Ethernet control is I226, which wasn't supported in PFSense 2.6. The I225 one were. Um, So one interface, I'm going to put IGC0, LAN interface, IGC3, leave the optional, yep. So now I've got the installed and it's on 192.168.1.1. So let me go and try that. So we get the wizard, um, as usual. As I say, I'm not going to go through how to install OpenSense. There's just, um, as I say, I've done a video on that. But you can see it's perfectly um, fine and it's connected at 2.5 gig. Let's switch this back. So £130 for um, a box that's really more than powerful enough to run OpenSense or PFSense or even Proxmox. Um, the CPU is a bit limited for how many virtual machines you can run. But you really, yeah, you can't go wrong for home abuse. It'd be nice if I could get BIOS updates for them. Um, if you was considering buying hardware from AliExpress, then yeah, it's definitely worth it. Um, let's say for the sake of 130 quid you can get yourself up and running in no time to play with. Um, I've seen a few people asking me on the different types of hardware, where you should get it from. So, yeah, I'm just going to leave the links down in the bottom of the video for that. Um, if you've used any hardware from AliExpress yourself, please um, feel free to leave your experiences in the comments below. Um, I'm always interested to see how other people have got on with it. If you did find this video useful, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel, hit that notifications icon um, about any videos that you're going to possibly want, not want to miss. We've got plenty coming up on OpenSense, um, PFSense, I've covered install in Proxmox. Um, now I've got Proxmox installed on one of these. It gives me the opportunity to install a couple of virtual machines and do videos properly without keep creating them on um, the other lab. Don't forget. Like, subscribe, um, we'll see you in the next video.